Hi everyone, my name is Frank Westfall, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to buy a new, used, high quality laptop. It's a common misconception that we always have to be using the newest, latest, greatest hardware in order to have up to date, modern capabilities in the software on our computers and our devices. That is simply not true in the vast majority of cases. But buying used hardware, such as a used laptop, can seem overwhelming if you don't know exactly what to look for and where to buy it. So in this video, I'm going to go through step by step what I do every time I buy new hardware for myself or do the research for someone else. While working as a professional in IT, it was common for us to get used parts or used hardware for our clients because very often it was simply more cost effective. And it is very rare that I buy brand new hardware for myself anymore. In the vast majority of cases, there simply isn't a reason to pay three or four times as much for a new piece of hardware when you can get a quality used one that will have the exact same capabilities or even better for one third or one fourth of the price. The key word there is quality. There is so much hardware on the market. What I'm gonna show you is how to cut through that noise find the quality stuff. And once you know how to do that process, it will save you a lot of money over time because you don't have to go buy brand new stuff in order to have quality stuff. Before I dive in it, I wanna say thank you very much to everyone who has subscribed to my channel. I really appreciate it. Please make sure to subscribe and hit the like button for more videos like this. Okay, so the very first thing we need to do is we need to know what we're gonna use the computer for. And I made this little list here to just kind of give a guideline for this video. We need to know what we're gonna use it for. And in this case, I'm talking about an everyday daily driver that is fully capable of doing modern tasks and pretty powerful on top of it. And I'm also assuming that we're gonna be running Windows 11 on this PC laptop. So once we know what we're gonna run on this, which is Windows 11 Pro, we need to look up the hardware system requirements for that. And we can do that just by Google searching System requirements, Windows 11. Google has AI overview in their search results now, and this is actually accurate. It actually is just reading this directly from Microsoft, but if we wanna be absolutely sure, we wanna to go to the manufacturer website and look it up. So here we are at Microsoft.com, and we are looking up the minimum system requirements for installing Windows 11 on a PC. And a lot of the used ones that you'll find will already have the operating system installed on them so you don't necessarily have to install a clean operating system. If it comes with Windows 11 on it, you already know that it meets the requirements for Windows 11. But if it doesn't come with an operating system and you're gonna install your own operating system on it, then you need to know that it's gonna meet these requirements. So I'll go through these really quick. One gigahertz or faster with two or more cores. This is basically any processor from like 2015, 2016 and on is gonna be able to meet these requirements. Four gigabytes of RAM, that's the minimum. On any laptop that you're gonna buy now, I would get a minimum of 16 gigabytes of RAM on it. And if you really wanna have it be nice for many years and highly capable, I would get 32 gigabytes on it. I'm gonna be showing you how to shop for one with 32 gigabytes of RAM on it. Storage, 64 gigabytes or larger system disk. I would recommend getting 500 gigabytes minimum on your storage device, and it absolutely has to be a solid state drive. Don't even consider any computer with a mechanical hard drive in it anymore. They are infinitely slower than solid state drives. And solid state drives are so inexpensive now, there's just no reason to use mechanical storage for your main system disk. Maybe you can use that for disk arrays or external storage, but for your system disk, you want it to be a solid state drive. We're gonna be looking for a 500 gigabyte solid state drive. System firmware, any computer like 2015 or 2016 or newer is gonna be able to support UEFI, but this is a requirement for Windows 11. We're gonna be looking for like a 2018, 2019 year computer, so it will definitely support UEFI. Now, TPM. TPM version 2.0 is a new requirement for Windows 11, and if you don't have TPM version 2.0 on it, you cannot run Windows 11 unless you bypass it. I actually do have a video that shows how to bypass it right here, bypass Windows 11 system requirements. And also just real quickly, I'll mention, I explain these system requirements in detail in this video. So if you have any questions about what I'm talking about here, I'm going through it kind of fast. If you have any questions on it, just watch this video because I go through it in detail. And one last thing I'll say while I'm on my channel here is that I also show how to make the Windows 11 bootable media so that if you end up buying a used laptop that doesn't have an operating system on it, 
you can just put your own operating system on it and then you know it's perfectly clean as well. So TPM 2.0 is a requirement for Windows 11 and that means that we need to verify that any hardware we buy has a TPM 2.0 chip on it. Graphics card, just basically any graphics card will work and basically any display will work. So now we know what the minimum hardware requirements are and then we have to find out what make and model we're going to be looking for. I already know that what we want to look for are business class computers. We don't want consumer class computers because consumer class computers actually use lower quality hardware on them and that means the hardware fails more often. One of the other things that's common with consumer class computers is that very often the parts aren't replaceable or they're not as easily replaceable if parts on them fail. Like say you get bad RAM, well the RAM might be soldered into the motherboard and then you have to unsolder it in order to put a new stick of RAM in there. A business class computer is usually going to have replaceable components on it in addition to being higher quality to begin with. So we're going to Google search what are the business class laptops from all manufacturers. This is an AI overview and it's actually pretty accurate. I've worked personally with Lenovo ThinkPads. They're very high quality. They are business class laptops. I haven't worked with HP Elite Books. Actually, I think I've worked on a couple of them. They're pretty decent. I'm generally not a fan of HP, to be honest, but they do make good hardware on their higher end stuff. So I'm sure Elite Books are pretty decent. I've used many, many, many Dell Latitudes. That's my personal favorite. They're awesome. We're all familiar with Apple. In this case, we're talking about a PC computer running Windows, so we're just going to rule that out. We're not even going to consider that. For these other manufacturers, Asus, Acer, Samsung, honestly, there's just no reason to go to these brands because a Lenovo ThinkPad or a Dell Latitude is for sure going to work. Whereas these, maybe they're good, maybe they're not. I don't know. I haven't used them enough to know. And I also don't want to take the chance. There's really no good reason to take the chance. The Microsoft Surface are actually really good. They're really expensive and they do run full Windows operating systems on them, which makes them awesome. But they're really expensive. They are high quality though. If I were coming into this brand new and didn't know what to look for, I'd be looking for a Lenovo ThinkPad or a Dell Latitude. And then we need to know what model we want to look for. So we know the manufacturer we're looking for. We know the model we're looking for, Latitude. Then we want to look for an actual model number. And how do we zero in on an actual model number? Well, our system requirements can give us insight as to what to look for. In this case, it has to have TPM 2.0 on it. And we can ask the question, well, when was the first Dell Latitude laptop released that had Trusted Platform Module 2.0 on it? And we can ask Google that. When did Latitude laptops start shipping with TPM 2.0? So this AI overview is actually pretty accurate here. Between like 2015 and 2018, the Latitudes would have either TPM 1.2 or TPM 2.0 on them. And sometimes the TPM 1.2 versions were upgradable to TPM 2.0. Considering it's 2025 when I'm recording this, we're just going to start looking for after 2019 because after 2019, all of them came with firmware version 2.0. So now we know, okay, we're looking for a Dell Latitude laptop that was made in 2019 or later. So then we still don't have the model number. How do we get that? Well, we can just look up a list of all latitudes. And Wikipedia is great for this kind of thing. Dell Latitude on Wikipedia. And this just shows us a list of all the latitudes that were ever made. And since we know we're looking for a 2019 model because it's going to ship with TPM 2.0 on it, we're going to know for sure that it's going to be able to run Windows 11 without any issues. Now we can start zeroing in on this. And we could go to a newer model, but these 2019 models are the sweet spot because they're the cheapest ones because they're the oldest, but they're still high quality hardware that can run Windows 11 without any issues. And Windows 11 is going to be here for another four or five years. So if you buy a 2019 model laptop like this right now, one of these models here, you're going to be able to run Windows 11 for four or five years on it. So now we have a bunch of different model numbers to choose from. And I'm going to zero in on this 5401. I like the smaller screens. It's a high performance and a lot of them will end up coming with a higher end GPU on them. Any of these would be 
good enough. These are all quality computers here. I like this 5501, this 5500, and this 5401. Also the 5400. These would be the ones I'd really be looking for. These ultra portables, they're great, but they're really fragile. Just any ultra portable, it's, what it means is it's going to be super thin and pretty delicate. These are more what you want to look for for your daily drivers. So let's just take a look at some of the technical specs on, say, for example, this 5401. Latitude, 5401 specs. And let's get this information directly from Dell. When you're looking up technical specifications for computers or technical specifications for software, you always want to go to the manufacturer. We want to get the information from the source. We don't want third party filtration or translation. We could look at what sort of chipset they have, what sort of different processors they can support. So they're doing ninth generation i5 and i7, a couple variations on the speeds on the processors. There's a bunch of stuff here, but one thing we do want to verify, we're pretty sure about this already, but we want to see it from Dell themselves. Security. We want to know it comes with TPM 2.0 because you have to have TPM 2.0 in order to run Windows 11. And yes, it does. It comes with it. So we're good to go on that. And then one of the other things that's kind of cool here is you can start getting a really good look at what's on it and the specific components. So say, for example, here it's showing you what it looks like when you're looking at it and exactly what those things do. So there's one microphone, then number five is a microphone as well. There's camera, camera shutter, camera status light. So right away, you know you have audio, you know you have video, you have a webcam, uh, there's your display, and then there's an LED status light. If you wanna start looking at what ports it comes with, you can start taking a look at the ports. There are variations on these, even with the same model number. So you wanna look when you're actually making the purchase of exactly what the ports are. But this gives you an idea of what is common on this particular model of this particular Dell Latitude series laptop. So this is a USB 3.0 type C port. This is a USB 3.0 type A port. This is your power input. This is an optional smart card reader. This micro SD slot, that's pretty handy. If you want to extend your storage with high speed storage, you can add a micro SD card to it. Say you put a 512 gigabyte micro SD card in there and now you have 512 gigabytes more of high speed solid state storage. So that's great. The optional SIM to be able to run it over a cell phone network, your 3.5 millimeter input jack for headphones or microphone, that's pretty sweet. And then a couple more USB 3.0 type A ports, then HDMI for additional video out, and then your RJ45 for wired network. And all of these come with internal wireless adapters on them. Like pretty much any modern laptop is gonna come with internal wireless adapters on them but you have wired and wireless. One of the things you want for like a daily driver computer, say you're using this on your home network, you wanna wire that thing directly to your router. Don't run it over Wi-Fi if you don't have to. If there's a router nearby and you can plug a cable into it, wired connections are always more reliable and stable. It's just another option for a more stable network connection. And network connections are everything when you're doing daily driving work on these computers. Could look at more views on it, but you get the idea. So we have a really good idea of what we're doing here. And just to recap, we've decided what software we're gonna run. We've looked up the hardware system requirements for that software. Then we've zeroed in on the specific brand and model, and then we've zeroed in on the model number. So the only thing left to do is start looking for these used from a quality seller that sells a lot of them. And the best places to do that are eBay and Amazon. I personally like eBay even better because there are a lot of very high volume professional sellers. We're going to start looking for some Latitude 5401. So right away, this computer, if you were to go buy it when it was brand new, this is probably a fourteen or $1,500 computer. We're already at 300 in the very first search results. And this is, this is not a joke. This is a quad core i7. Actually, I think that's a six core. Let's take a look at this processor specs. So yeah, this is a six core base frequency, 2.6 gigahertz processor, max frequency 4.6. This is a powerful processor for a daily driver that's gonna basically allow you to do everything you'd need to do for your home office or anything you're gonna do personally or even a small office business environment. This is more than enough. You're gonna be able to do everything you need to do with this laptop. That's a pretty solid one right there. 
Um, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 500 gigabyte NVE. That's a solid state drive. Windows 11 Pro. This is pretty solid. Look at this seller's feedback, 99.9% .9 positive, and they have 4,405 feedbacks. I used to sell professionally on eBay, and I can tell you that only about one out of every five people actually leave feedback. So if this seller has 4,000 feedbacks, that means they've sold at least 20,000 items on eBay. That's hardcore professional selling. And to sell 20,000 items and have 99.9% .9 positive feedback is really, really good. The only thing that I'd be looking for more on this, personally, is I'd want 32 gigs of RAM on it. And then the other thing you want to verify real quick is when you're buying used, you always want to make sure that they accept returns. And it's even better if they pay for the returns. What that tells you is that if there's something wrong with it, they're just going to send you a return label, you send it back, and they give you a replacement or a refund. You don't ask questions when you're a professional eBay seller. You just make your customers happy, period because you move on to the next sale. So they're gonna take care of you. They're just gonna give you your money back or send you a new laptop. People are always scared of buying used stuff because they're like, I don't wanna get into a situation where it's not as described or it's not working properly and then it becomes a big problem. The way you avoid that is you buy from high volume sellers with very high feedback. The last thing they wanna do is go back and forth messaging with you. They just wanna get it done and move on. And the fact that they have returns and pay for return shipping tells you that they don't even put it out the door unless they're very confident that you're gonna keep it. This is one example. Let's just take a look at a couple other examples. Um, let's say we wanted 32 gigs of RAM on it. That's what I would personally be looking for at this time is I'd wanna filter results by 32 gigs of RAM and just see what we're looking at. So this one has a slower processor. It's still a nice processor. That i5 9th generation is probably a pretty fast quad core, but it only has 128 gigabytes of solid state drive. So I'd want something more than that. Um, this one's looking pretty sweet. So this has that same six core processor, 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD with Windows 11 Pro. That's pretty sweet. 379, it's getting up on the higher side of the price, but if you were to go buy a computer that had these exact same specs on it new right now, it'd be over $1,000 for sure. So you're at like one third of the price here. That's what's awesome about knowing what to look for when you're buying used hardware because you can get really nice stuff for, like I said, one third, one fourth, one half the price. If you're willing to go half the price of new, you're going to get extremely high quality stuff. So anyway, you get the idea, but this is how you take all that noise of all the hardware that's out there and you zero in very precisely on the good stuff. This list is how you do that. And I just wanna show you that I have a bunch of different videos about how to get your files back, the Windows 11 system requirements, creating bootable media for Windows 11. Um, I did a metadata analysis on the Epstein prison video that the White House released, doing external backups with a USB drive, extending your laptop's lifespan, I have a bunch of really good videos on my channel, uh, so please check some of the other ones out. I'm considering getting a new laptop for myself because I've been running this since 2014, and I run Windows 11 on it, and it works pretty well. I'm starting to push the limitations of the hardware on it. What you just saw is exactly what I'm gonna do when I decide to buy. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button for more videos like this. Bye for now.